Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you are enjoying this podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. Today's episode of Philo Vance is provided by Radio Archives. Radio Archives has made high-quality old-time radio collections, Pulp Fiction ebook reprints, and Pulp Fiction audiobooks. And you can try a sample of each of these three products by sending an email to detectives at radioarchives.com. In addition, during this time, they have acquired... 36,000 old-time radio transcription disc, which they are making available at a rate of 600 programs per month to their subscribers. You can sample the first month's transfers for only $59.98, which benefits the great detectives of old-time radio. And if you choose to continue on you can do so for only $60 a month, which is $0.10 cents a program and half off the normal price. Just go to transfers.greatdetectives.net to sign up. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of Follow Vance. The original air date, May the 16th of 1950, and the title is The Manicure Murder Case. <laughs> Come on, keep it moving, you guys. What are you doing? Setting up a roadblock? Get those cars going. Hey, lady, what are you doing? You'll get yourself killed running through that traffic. Please come with me now. Something terrible's happened. Hurry. Now, what is it that's so terrible, Chickadee? I have a manicure in the barber shop right over there. Man came in for manicure about 20 minutes ago. Oh, is that so awful, little one? Well, he, he seemed to be in pain. When I was almost finished, he, well, he seemed to be trying to stay conscious, but he kept telling me to hurry. Well? A minute ago, he keeled over in the chair. I think he's dying. And what makes you think so, may I ask? Oh, I noticed blood in his coat. He was bleeding to death. Said he'd been shot. That's why I ran over to get you. He was dying and he insisted on getting a manicure? Yeah. We'll see what this is all about. Is uh, this the shop? Yeah. Yeah, it is. All right, all right now. Where's this fellow who's supposed to be dying? He isn't supposed to be dying anymore, officer. He's dead. <laughs> Tell me honestly, Vance, did you ever hear of anything so completely unreasonable? A dying man insisting on a manicure? Yes. No, Markham, I never did. But I'm glad you called me in on the case. I had to call you in. Despite the fact that I'm district attorney and have a very capable police force functioning, I'm sure this case will be a test for even your talents. You know who the dead man was? Yes, a scientist named Edgar Wilson. Mm. But we have no idea who shot him, or why, or for that matter, where. I understand that you don't know, but what theories have you, Markham? Theories? What theories could anybody have? Sergeant Heath has a fantastically fictional idea that there was a code message on the man's fingernails, and he wanted that message covered by liquid polish when he felt himself dying. Mm, that would be something new, wouldn't it? I suppose. What ideas do you have? Well, I... Hello, D.A. Sergeant Heath. You don't look very happy. I wonder why. All right, Vance. Heath? What's the trouble, Heath? Trouble? Oh, I got no trouble. I just got a murdered guy who wanted a manicure on my hands, that's all. Seems to me he wanted the manicure on his hands. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Please, please. What about your theory that there was a code message written on the fingernails? What have you done about that? I had the laboratory put some polish remover on the guy's nails. Polish came off all right, but there was nothing written on them. But isn't it possible that whatever was written came off when the polish remover was applied? 
Hey, I never thought of that. Holy cow, if that's what happened, I'm the prize bonehead in the department. Right, take I ought easy. to kick myself all over. Don't do it on account of the polish remover here. <laughs> huh? I'm pretty sure there was nothing on the victim's nails. Uh, that makes me feel better. Hey, how do you know there was nothing on him? I don't know. I just don't believe there was. And I have good reason, as usual. The DA here is president of your fan club, Vance, but I'm not even a member. I want to know the reason why that guy got a manicure as he was dying if it wasn't to cover up something. I might be able to tell you that, Heath. I have an idea. I'll be able to tell you the secret of Edgar Wilson's fingernails just as soon as I have his killer under my thumb. <laughs> Oh, I gotta say is... Uh, That's all you ever gotta say. Uh, what makes you so sleepy, Sleepy? Who knows? It's a wonder to me you didn't fall asleep when you shot that scientist guy, Edgar Wilson, this morning. Who said I was awake? Ah, oh, you dope. If I was awake, I'd have plugged him so good he wouldn't have moved. This way, he lived long enough to make it to some barber shop, papers say. Well, he didn't talk, so we got nothing to worry about. All I got... Oh, oh hey, you got me doing it. Stop cutting in on my racket. Ah, you. How much further we got to go? This is it. The first shack off the road down there. You see it? Uh, I guess that means yes. Our orders are to go in and look around for a bottle marked Experiment X. Experiment X? X, you dope, like in ecstasy. Hey, I seen that picture with the, that girl, what's the name? Uh, Some name for a girl. <laughs> Come on, sleepy, out. Uh, and cut that out. You're making me sleepy. So what is that, bad? Any chance of there being anybody in the shack? You know better than that. The guys we work for know what the score is. They said Wilson would be alone when we got there to plug him. He was. They said there would be nobody in this shack. There won't be nobody. Well, it's okay with me. I ain't in the mood for company. See if the door's locked. It is. Come on, let's bust it in. Uh, you do it. I'll stay here and watch. Come on, sleepy. I'll need help. Okay. Now. <coughs> Once more. Oh, uh, must we? Okay, okay, let's do it. Hold it a second, Sleepy. A pleasure. Uh, just till I get this flashlight out of my pocket. Uh, there we are. Uh, now for a look around. Hey, there's a, uh, a row of bottles over on that shelf. Yeah, so I see. Well, all we gotta do is find one marked Experiment X. Like an ecstasy. Sure was a great picture. On that, I agree. There was one scene in it Sleepy, where... Sleepy, the... there's the bottle we want. Right here on the second shelf. You see it? Yeah. Experiment X. Uh, let's grab it and get out of here so we can collect our dough. Hey, you grab it. I'd have to reach up a little. Okay, here we go. Come to Papa, little bottle. <laughs> Tell me, you fool. Tell me exactly what happened. Well, it was like this. I did what you told me. When the Miller brothers killed Professor Wilson for you, I followed them to make sure there was no slip-up. What happened when they went after the explosion? I'm trying to tell you. I followed the car. I saw them stop. I saw them break down the door and go into the shack. They found Wilson's laboratory. Good. Then what happened? Well, then they were inside for a while, a minute maybe. Then all of a sudden there was a big explosion. And then no more shack, no more Miller brothers. <laughs> so they found Experiment X, did they? I guess they did. But Professor Wilson was smart. He probably knew an attempt would be made to steal it. He had the container wired so that it set off the explosive. I guess that's what it was. Very clever, the professor. <laughs> Even after he was dead, he managed to take care of the man who shot him. Oh, well. I have another plan. What's that? I must find out about Experiment X. And I think I know who can tell me. Professor Wilson had an assistant. <laughs> I wonder how she's going to like assisting me. No, no, I'm sorry, Sergeant Heath. There's you... nothing I can tell you that I haven't already told you about my employer. Oh, no. 
Now, look, Miss Rainey, Professor Wilson must have been working on something extra special, something that somebody didn't want him to finish, so they killed him. If he was, I didn't know about it. But... Now, please, Sergeant Heath, it's late and I've got to leave here. I have my coat on and my hat on and I'm expected home. If I think of anything that can help you, I'll phone you. Uh, okay, okay, goodbye. <sighs> well, that's that. I beg your pardon. Oh. I'm sorry I startled you. My name is Vance, Philo Vance. I'm a private investigator. Oh, yes, I know about you. Oh? Are you working on Professor Wilson's murder? I will work on it when I can find something tangible to start with. Do you mind if I walk a little way with you? All right. It's a dark street, and I'm glad of the company. Is uh, there something I can tell you that will help you? You'd know that better than I. I just told Sergeant Heath on the telephone that I didn't know what Professor Wilson was working on. If that's what you mean. But you must know. You were his assistant, as I understand. Yes, but that doesn't mean All that right, I know... Just stop right where you are. Well, you... What the, what, what's the idea? do not turn around, either of you. That's good. I don't want to use my gun. That's bad. That's no lie. What do you want? Not you, whoever you are. I merely want this young lady, you want Miss to... Doris Rainey, I believe your name is, to accompany me. No. Apparently, she has neither the desire nor the intention, so I think I... Oh! Help! Oh. Help! Stop it! Stop it! Help. You're biting my hand! Help me! Oh. Help me! Oh. Don't let him get me in the car! Oh, brother, what fell on me? That car. You! Stop! Stop! Oh, license number 162857. Hmm. Well, my friend, whoever you are, you got the girl, but I've got your number. Yes, Vance, I'm having the license number you gave me checked right now. You're sure you're not hurt badly? I have a slight headache, but I'll be all right, and I guarantee I'll be a bigger headache to whoever hit me on the head. Sergeant Heath is checking the number. He'll buzz me in a minute. You say they kidnapped the girl who was walking with you? Yes, but I'm sure they won't harm her for a while anyway. And by that time, with the help of the license checkup, I ought to have found them. You're lucky you got a look at the plates. Markham, I always get at least one lucky break on a case. Otherwise, I'd fail dismally in most of them. I think otherwise. In my... Just a minute, Vance. That's probably Heath now. I'll hold on. Right. Yes? This is Heath, D.A. Yes, Heath. I have Vance on the phone now, waiting for the name and address of the owner of that license number. Well, he's going to have a long wait. What do you mean? No such number listed. That's what I mean. What? Vance either got the number wrong or the car had phony plates. If it's one of those two possibilities, I'm sure the plates were counterfeit. Uh, thanks, Heath. Hello, Vance. Yes, I heard Heath Markham. All I can say is that maybe I do always get one lucky break on a case. But apparently, that license number isn't it. I'm losing patience with you, Miss Rainey. Apparently, <laughs> twisting your arm does no good. Oh, if I ever get off this chair, I... You will do nothing. You're tied securely, and I will untie you only when I am good and ready. <laughs> yeah, it's very annoying, very unmusical, and cannot help you in the least little bit. This house of mine is far out in the country. Nobody can hear you. Now, will you tell me what I want to know? How can I tell you if I don't know? Again, the same speech, always the same speech. You know, I don't you know. know about Experiment X. You worked with Wilson. You were with him in everything he did. No. You know about Experiment X. No. You'll tell me. You'll tell me. Do you hear? You will tell me. Oh, leave me alone. Please leave me alone. I don't know anything about the experiment. Except that... Professor Wilson was working on it. Oh, there's much I know, too. He wouldn't talk when I sent two men to persuade him. They shot him. I knew about his shack in the mountains. My men went there, but they were killed in an explosion. But Wilson had another laboratory. Where is it? I don't know. I keep telling you, I don't know. That is a lie, and you will tell no. me. You must. All right. All right, I do have something to tell you. Ah, oh, good. Do you know the man who was with me? Do you know who he was? I'm not interested. You will be. He was Philo Vance. Did you ever hear of Philo Vance? Oh, that was Philo Vance. Huh? 
What about it? He never saw my face. And if he did see the license plates in my car, it'll do him no good, for I changed two of the numbers myself. You changed... No matter who he is, he can never find me. We'll see. Miss Rainey, I lose patience again talking to you. Wilson was working on an explosive he called Experiment X. It was a liquid. That much we know. What was the formula? I never knew the formula. That is possible, but you know where there is some of that liquid. No, I don't. Some that my chemist can no. analyze. Where no. is that place? I know. Where? 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 I'll never tell you. <laughs> Brave words. But you've been here only a few hours. All I've done so far is to twist your arm a little. Oh. That is nothing compared to what will happen to you, Miss Rainey. Don't forget nobody has any idea where you are. Nobody can possibly <laughs> rescue you. What about it? I have an idea how to make you tell me what I want to know. Miss Rainey, it's my suggestion that you talk. <laughs> well, you still have a tongue to talk with. <laughs> This is District Attorney Markham. The manicure murder case opened when Professor Edgar Wilson, scientist, died in a barber shop after insisting the girl manicure his nails, even though he was dying. We have no explanation for this, no clue to the professor's killer as yet, although Philo Vance did have an encounter with an individual whom we believe was the brains behind the murder. In an effort to work out some tangible lead to that individual, Vance is in my office. Where do I begin, Markham? A simple question like that has me stopped completely on this case. A simple answer might be in order, Vance, but I don't have it. Either a simple or a complex answer. All I can tell you is I don't know. Well, let's start from the beginning. Professor Wilson wanted a manicure when he was dying. Why? You said you thought you knew the reason. Well, let's say I still think I know the reason. How do I prove what I think? Well, there's one way. And, Vance, it might be the answer to that question you asked. About where do I begin? Yes. Well, I'm listening. What's the one way? Why not check back at the barber shop where Wilson died? Perhaps that shop has some connection with his death and the reason he insisted on having his nails done. Good idea, Markham. That's where I'm going, for a little interview with that barbershop manicurist. Maybe I'll even let her do my nails. Maybe having her hold my hand will help me make heads or tails out of this case. <laughs> Long, short, or half and half? Suit yourself. Mister, if I suited myself, I'd pack you in right now. Well. I'm tired. You don't need no manicure. Really? What you come in for? Keep out of the rain? It's not raining. And you don't need no manicure. So, here we are back where we started. Maybe I'd better introduce myself. I'm Philo Vance. Oh, it's okay. I'm swooning. It takes me a little time to faint. So, you're Vance. So what? So, I understand you're the young lady who manicured Professor Wilson's nails as he was dying. That's right. You ain't figuring on kicking off, are you? Not just yet. I want to know what he told you when he came in. When he came in, he sat down, stuck out his hand, he said, give me a manicure fast. There was colorless liquid polish on his nails. You put it on? Sure. Like I said, he said, give me a manicure fast. I said, long, short, or in between? He said, short. So, well, he filed them and finished them up. About all. Except when I see he's about to pass out, I... Beat it out of the shop and pick up the traffic cop in the corner. Thank you very much. Hey, where you going? Manicure you didn't need ain't finished. I know, and neither is the case I'm working on. But after what you've told me, it will be finished. And very soon. Hello, D.A. Come in, Heath. Come in. Or am I a little late with my invitation? Well, that's the difference. Better late than never, I always say. I always say something about an early bird. I can't remember right now what the rest of it is. Uh, what's on your mind, Heath? All right, if I sit down. Uh, apparently. What's that paper in your hand? Uh, this? Oh, it's a teletype report on an explosion out in the suburbs. Two men were killed when a shack blew up. 
We checked on the car they were driving. We think we know who they were. Yes? Yeah, Miller brothers, Sleepy and Joe. Hired killers. We can't Excuse figure... Excuse me. Here. Yeah, sure. This is your attorney, Markham, speaking. Vance Markham. Hello there. Markham, I just left the barber shop where Professor Wilson had his nails manicured. Yes? You remember I thought I knew why he had them done as he was dying? You had an idea about it? Yes. It's now a conviction. I want you to find out for me if the professor was working on some new invention that was in a liquid form. A new process, an explosive, something along those lines. I don't know how I can, Vance. As you know, Wilson's girl assistant was kidnapped and he left no records. Uh, wait a minute. Yes? There were two men. Hired killers who met their death in an explosion in a shack in the suburbs, Sergeant Heath just told me. You think that might tie up with our case? It might, and it's worth a gamble. Right. We've got to work fast now, or that girl assistant might be killed by whoever is responsible for Wilson's death. He won't believe she doesn't know what the professor was working on. What do we do about it? We'll take one long shot, Markham. I'll need your help. All right. Did you know Professor Wilson had an assistant named Dr. Blake? No, I didn't. Well, he didn't have, but I don't believe anybody knows that. Or the fact that I'm going to be in touch with Dr. Blake, who is going to make a killer take his medicine. Ah, you are so obstinate, Miss Rainey. So very obstinate. Please, please, can I have some water? You can have anything you want after you tell me what I must know. Wilson was working on an explosive. He called it Experiment X. What were the components of Experiment X? Please, please, a little water, just a little... Where can I get a sample of Experiment X? A drop will do, the smallest possible sample. My chemist can analyze it and break it down. Tell me. I don't know, I don't know. There's some way to make you talk. Some way you'll tell me what I want to know. Ah, you're a nice girl, Miss Rainey, very nice girl, and uh, you have a mother. You wouldn't dare go near her. The police will be protecting her. Philo Vance will figure that you'll try to make me talk to her. You leave my mother alone. Oh, so that is the way. No. Good, now I can... Who is it? It's me, Andy. It's a Come. What is it? Look, this newspaper... Look at it. Let me have it. What is it I'm to look for? On the first page, the item in the corner. Dead scientist assistant arrives tonight. This one? Oh, read it. Dr. William Blake, noted scientist in his own right and former assistant of the late Professor Edgar Wilson, arrives at Main Street Station at midnight tonight. Dr. Blake announced when leaving his hometown that he was coming here to continue the experiment started by Professor Wilson. Mm Mm-hmm. Dr. Blake declared that he has a complete knowledge of them, having been in constant contact via long-distance phone with Professor Wilson for months. You uh, knew Dr. Blake, Miss Rennie? I don't know what you're talking about. For a girl who was smart enough to be Professor Wilson's assistant, you have a terrible memory. Perhaps now we don't need you, You eh? won't need me. (laughs) Andy. Yeah? I think we should be ready to leave here very shortly. You and I have to meet the midnight train. And Dr. William Blake. Here he comes, fellas. I got your cameras ready. Dr. Blake, Dr. Blake. Yes? Yeah, please hold away while we get some pictures. Hurry, then. It's very late, and I'm very anxious to get to my it hotel. Oh, take a minute, Dr. Blake. Okay, boys, come on. Grab your shots now. And uh, just one more, please, Dr. Blake. Hold it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, is it all right, gentlemen, please? Sure, Doc. Go ahead. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. I'll be at the Carlton Hotel if your newspaper should want me. Thanks, Doc. I think the boss will send a man up to see you to find out what you're going to work on. I shall see him. Good night. Night. Good night. Uh, Dr. Blake? Yes? Who are you? And your friend? It doesn't matter who I am or who he is, either. You will kindly not make any disturbance, but come along quietly with us. I don't understand. Who will, dear sir? You were Professor Wilson's assistant. You knew what project he was working on, the secret of his experiment X. Yes, of course. Take it off, Andy. Hold it tightly. Okay. Take your hands off. Hey, hey, his beard. His beard. It's fallen off. This is a trick. 
Come on, let's get away from here. Not so fast. I think I can hold you two. Mark him, hurry. Vance. Hold him, Vance. Oh, Vance. 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 This was a trick. Yes, and you fell for it, my friend. All right, Vance, I'll take this flat here. Hold on to your man. Nobody holds on to me. I got to wait. I, right. I make you stay like this. All right, I'm... <laughs> Nice work, Vance. This fellow I'm holding gave me no trouble at all. Oh, that was no trouble, Markham. Hitting my friend was fun. Let's get him up, get him out of here. And I'll be ready to tell you why Professor Wilson insisted that his nails be done, even though he knew he was done for. Markham, my friend, I'm beginning to believe you're a very persuasive young man. How do you mean, Vance? You persuaded those men we picked up at the railroad station to tell you where they were holding Professor Wilson's assistant, Doris Rainey. That was relatively easy. Besides, I wouldn't have had a chance to work on them if you hadn't found them for me. They found me, Markham. Just as I hoped they would when we had the newspapers print the arrival of the entirely fictitious Dr. Blake. <laughs> they certainly did. You know, of course, if my beard hadn't come loose... I'd have gone along with them. Yes, and I would have followed you as per our plan. Yes. Vance, you said that I was persuasive. That's right. Well, could I persuade you to get around to telling me why Professor Wilson wanted his nails manicured? Certainly. Let's go back a little, though. All right. Wilson was working on his experiment X, an explosive. Yes. We know that now. It was a liquid. We know that, too. The man who kidnapped Miss Rainey hired two men to shoot him, which they did. But they didn't kill him. He ran from them and got to the barbershop. I know that much. Markham, Wilson had some of his experiment X under his fingernails. The manicurist told me his nails were long. We know he was working with a liquid. The smallest quantity of experiment X, if it fell into the wrong hands, would be sufficient for his killers to find its formula. I see. He had his nails filed, so any evidence of the formula that might have been under them would be lost. Exactly. Oh. Sergeant Heath's theory that something might have been written on the fingernails was an impractical one. If Wilson had had time to write anything on his nails, he would have had time to tell what he had written to the manicurist or the barber. Yes, yes. I knew it wasn't that. So you said at the beginning of this little adventure. Yes, I did. And now I say it's the end of our little adventure. The end of the manicure murder case. <laughs> Welcome back. Sergeant Heath's thought, and I'm being generous by calling it a thought, about the potential for a hidden message may be just one of the most all-around dumb lines that the show has ever had anyone take. Vance explained the problem with the logic of putting some hidden codes on the nails. But it's worse than that. Because recall, the manicurist put a standard clear coat that was colorless. While there are some modern nail polishes that can look like your nails, but they're not really, we're talking 1950 clear coat that you would put on a guy's nails. That's not going to conceal anything. In fact, it would accentuate. And even if that weren't dumb, using 
nail polish remover to get to the secret message. And recall that this is also 1950, so nail polish remover is acetone based. It's like the onion of wrongness with what Heath proposed. Even if he wasn't totally wrong and off base with one part of his idea, there was another part of his idea that was equally off base even if the other thing hadn't been wrong. On the other hand, we did have a smarter villain. I think that most other detectives, if they got a license number, would know that it's something they should know, but that the car was stolen or the plates were stolen. Vance was hoping that this was his lucky break, because in the Philo Vance universe, it would not be at all unexpected for a criminal mastermind to commit a crime, and to have his own plates on the car that went back to his address. So, again, we had a higher level of villain who was also menacing to the poor assistant. I did also appreciate he correctly calling Markham the president of the Philo Vance fan club, because that's how he acts. On the downside, I wasn't a huge fan of the episode concluding with some... As you know, dialogue, particularly when it was laying out something that the audience probably just fill in by reading between the lines. Listener comments and feedback now, and we go to Facebook where Richard writes, Okay, so I have a question about this series that has been bugging me for the longest time. How come no one refers to him as Mr. Vance or Philo? Is Philo his first name? Even his secretary calls him Vance. I know people in the military will refer to each other by last name, but I would think at a minimum his assistant would refer to him as something other than just Vance. It's a good question. Yeah, his first name is Philo, but no one seems to use it. I can't recall in either of the two Philo Vance books I've read anyone using it, so it might be a carryover from the book. It's certainly not unheard of for someone to be called either mostly or all the time by just their last name. Thinking of later examples... You had George Papard's uh, character, Banachek, who pretty much everyone called Banachek. And then the one that I grew up with, and therefore totally made this issue a non-issue for me, was MacGyver. Even MacGyver's best friend, Pete, calls him MacGyver. In a formal setting, he calls him MacGyver. When it's just the two of them hanging out, he calls him MacGyver. And sometimes fictional characters and even real-life people can have weird things that they call each other. I remember the radio adaptation of the novel Noon Wine, where the wife always called her husband Mr. Thompson, which never stopped striking me as weird during the entire program. I will say that mixing up how your character is referred to can be nice because it can express some differences in relationship. It can show some uh, character points. Like, they did introduce one character in Banachek who took to calling him Thomas, I think, in the second season. Now, with Philo Vance, I I can see why he would just go by Vance to everyone. Because I could see if I had the name Philo not liking it a whole lot. Now, the obvious alternative to Philo would be Phil, but I think, honestly, uh, he is not a Phil. I cannot imagine him saying to someone, oh, please just call me Phil. No, no, that's that's not him at all. So I think that him just being called Vance makes a lot of sense in this case, even though it does limit some of the characterization and nuance that you get with variation, but then again, you wouldn't be likely to get it from this show that much anyway. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank 
Murph MCB, Patreon supporter since February of 2021, currently supporting the program at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying the podcast, I encourage you to follow us using your favorite podcast software. And please be sure to rate and review the show wherever you download it from. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Follow Vance. But join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, where... I didn't want to hang around. I had a good thing going here and I wasn't about to get it lost step. But it was no use. I couldn't keep her out. What did her father think about it? He didn't like the idea, but he couldn't do much about it. She got her own way with him, the same as with everybody else. Except when she wanted to go to New York. Well, nobody can win them all. I understand you put that idea in her head, Sammy. Then you better take a different understand. Yeah? Yeah. She was bugged up on that idea before I ever met her. That's why she started coming in here. She wanted me to put her hep on how it was in the big, wild city. She wanted to know how to get in. What was the names of all the spots, including the rough ones? How the rackets worked. (laughs) How would I know how the rackets worked? (laughs) I didn't say a word, Sammy. You know something? In some ways, that kid's as smart as a mink. But underneath, she's a regular hick, just like the rest of them around here. She thinks that stuff is glamour, the big time, hot stuff. And she was busting her braces to get at it. Even this place, this, this crummy clip joint. To her, it was wicked and exciting. Oh, man, how square can you get? I suppose you're trying to talk her out of going to New York. Do I look crazy or something? I was all for it, anywhere. As long as it got her off my neck. Oh, a beautiful girl like Luann Parker on your neck and you were trying to shake her off? Oh, Sammy, I'm losing you. Oh, look, Dollar, when it comes to dames, I've got as fast an eye as the next guy. But with that chick, oh, man, I unpack my toothbrush and I stay home. Why? Why? She's got this whole town fooled, everybody but me. A sweet little thing in ruffled rompers, bucking for a halo. Well, I got news for you, brother. She ain't. And you're the only one who really knows her. Is that what you're claiming, Sammy? Sure. It's a big laugh. But that kid's smart. And inside, she's colder than a fish. I'm a fairly tough baby, Dollar, but I'll tell you something straight. I'm scared of that girl. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.